Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to go through five glute exercises that are perfect for runners. So in this video, I'm going to go through level one exercises. And then in another couple of videos, I'm gonna go through level two and level three. So in this video in level one, we're going to go through some basic fundamental exercises that are great for beginners. So if you haven't done a lot of glute training before, these exercises are going to be perfect for you to start with. So we're going to go through some really simple movements where you're going to really feel those glute muscles working. And then in the next couple of videos, we're going to build on from that and develop some of that strength further. So let's get started. All you need to do this workout is a resistance band. So any kind of resistance band will do. And that is the only piece of equipment that you will need. The first exercise we're going to do is a floor bridge. So an option is to add a resistance band to this, but let me show you first how to do it without the resistance band. So you're going to lie on the floor, head supported, your lower back is going to be pretty flat on the floor, knees are bent and your heels are fairly close to your backside there. Make sure that your knees are hip distance apart and your, so are your feet. So you don't want to be starting with your knees collapsing inwards at all. So knees, hips and feet all in line. And from here, you're just going to have your hands across your chest and then lift your hips up, pushing your glutes up into the air, squeezing those buttocks muscles and then coming back down. The key with this exercise is to control the lift just from your hips. What I mean by that is to not over arch your back. You don't want to have this big arch in your back where you're really lifting up by just um, extending your lower back. So the lift comes from just your hips. And the best way to make sure that you're only lifting your hips is by flattening your back first. So you want to press your back into the floor and then push your hips up in the air, squeeze these glute muscles and then come back down. Having your hands across your chest also helps just isolate the movement into your glutes so that you're not pushing yourself up with your hands. So you lift, squeeze your glutes and squeezing those buttocks muscles at the top and then coming down and relaxing. Squeeze and relax. Like I said at the start, you can add a resistance band to this one. So if you've got a resistance band, just loop it through your feet and place it just above your knees. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, but with the resistance band, you're going to have tension on your knees. So like we did at the start, you still wanna make sure that your um, feet, knees and hips are all hip distance apart. So everything's in a straight line, but the resistance band is going to be pulling your knees in. So you need to work against that band, pulling your knees out. So you're going to create a bit of that tension and then you're going to do the exact same thing, lifting your hips up, squeezing your glutes and then coming back down. Still want to make sure you've got a flat back and you're just keeping that constant tension on the band, just avoiding letting your knees collapse in. So pulling those knees out and holding that position. As you do this, you should feel those glute muscles starting to work and engage, especially at the top of that lift. And you're gonna go for eight to 12 reps of this one, nice and slow, don't rush it, just work on making sure you've got that right form, controlling the movement the whole time. All right, exercise two is a side lying leg raise. So we've got the band there for later as an option, but we're gonna start off without the band. You're going to lie on your side, support your head, but don't prop yourself up. So lie all the way down and just support your head. And then you're going to lie with both legs straight and hips stacked one on top of the other. So you almost want to roll your hips slightly more forward than um, feels natural. So if you're lying back here, you won't be able to feel the right muscles engaging. So just make sure that you're really stack, stacking your top hip over that bottom hip, almost rolling slightly more forward than what feels natural. And then once you get into that position, you're going to lift that top leg up slowly and then control it down halfway. And then lifting up again. You don't have to lift all the way up. It's not getting you into that full range of movement. All we're doing is getting up into a slight angle where you can start to feel these muscles at the top of your hip engaging. And then you're controlling it down halfway. This exercise is all about control. So 
I want you to do it slowly and smoothly, really focusing on just controlling that leg movement as far up as you feel comfortable and then controlling it back down halfway. And sometimes it helps to have your hand just on the top of your hip there and you should be able to feel those muscles right through the top of your hip there working. Like we did at the start where I made you sort of um, set yourself up with your hip rolled forward, as you do this exercise, watch that you're not rolling back and doing this sort of rocking motion in the lift. Make sure your hips stay forward and the movement is really just that hinge through the hip joint there. And you're going to go for 8 to 10 reps on each side with this one. Just going really slow, smooth and steady. If that feels pretty easy, this is where we can add the resistance band. So just like you did with the bridges, we're going to loop the band around your knees and then do the exact same thing. So hips are still forward and you're lifting your leg up halfway, down halfway. Obviously with the resistance band, there's going to be more resistance on the way up. So those muscles have to work a bit harder. And then also on the way down, the resistance band is going to try and spring you back. So you have to work against it. Make sure that the movement stays really slow and controlled. So lifting up, controlling down, lifting up, controlling down. For the next exercise, we're going to be in an all fours position. So hands are gonna be under your shoulders and knees are gonna be under your hips. So in this position, it's really important to start with a neutral back. And what I mean is not letting your back be overly arched. And then same thing, not letting your back be overly um, hitched up either. So just that good neutral position. And you should feel pretty comfortable in this position before you start. So then the movement is going to be a extension of one leg and then sweeping out to the side and then back. And we're gonna stay on that one leg, just focusing on that little movement out to the side from your hip. The key with this exercise is to make sure that the movement is isolated to just your hip. What I mean by that is I don't want you bending or tilting or rotating or moving your whole body to get that movement out. So the, the rest of your body stays really, really still and stable. So nice and strong through your shoulders, strong through your core, and just isolating that movement to your hip. It's actually not a very big movement, but you should feel it just at the top of this hip there, in that top corner. All right guys, for this next exercise, you're going to need your resistance band and we're going to loop it through your feet and just above your knees again. We're gonna go into a squat. So feet are gonna go slightly wider than your hips and your knees are going to pull that band apart. So not being in that position, pulling your knees apart. And then we're going to go into a squat movement. A couple of key things things to remember when you're doing a squat. You want most of your weight on your heels. So your toes should actually be pretty light. You should be able to wriggle your toes around, keep your weight on the back of your heels, and then you're going to lead the movement with your hips. So what I mean by that is you're going to move your hips back to go down into the squat rather than dropping into your knees. So weight on your heels, move your hips back, and then come back up. Okay, so that's your basic squat movement. And by having your weight on your heels, you're going to use the back of your leg muscles a lot more than putting that weight on the front of your knees. A lot of people find that they struggle to do squats because it hurts their knees. And what we usually see in those people is that they're really leaning into their knees when they do their squats, putting all of their weight on their toes and the front of their legs. So shift that back, move your hips back, and then control the movement with your hips rather than your knees. The point of the band is it's just going to create that tension through your hips. So you're going to keep the band pulled out 
Make sure that as you're going into your squat, your knees stay out, never letting this happen. So we don't want your knees collapsing in, knees out, sitting all the way back and coming back up. All right, for this exercise, you're going to need something around the house that you can hold onto for balance. So this can be the back of a chair, the top of your kitchen bench, basically anything that's sturdy that you can grab onto. And then you're going to stand on one leg on the opposite side to the hand that you're holding onto. So balancing on that leg, just like we did with the squats, I want your weight on your heel with this one. Toes nice and light, you should be able to wriggle those toes around. Then we're going to go into what we call an arabesque, which is this movement, pulling one leg back, the opposite hand forward, and then coming back up. So you're moving your hips back as far as you can, reaching out as far as you can with that back leg, and reaching forward as far as you can with your hand. Reach back, and then come back up. Remember, weight is on your heels, and you're moving by leading that hip back more than going into your knees so you're not your knees are bending but you're not going forward into your knees so watch that you're not doing this it's really weight on your heels move your hips back stretch your leg and arm out and then come back up and as you do that you should feel that in this hip on your balancing leg Again, going for the eight to 10 reps on each side. Don't rush this one. Make sure you go slow and controlled, really feeling that glute engage. All right guys, there you have a level one glute exercises. So that's five exercises for you to get started with. Give those a go. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and head over to the next video for level two exercises when you're ready.